What's up guys, my name is Andrew Suarez, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install Windows 10 on a QEMU KVM virtual machine. So the first thing I want you guys to do is to go head over to the Arch Wiki, especially if you're using Arch Linux. This is a very Arch Linux centric tutorial because I'm running Arch Linux and that's what I'm going to be using for this video. Now uh, on this wiki it will explain everything you really need to know to how to do this with command line. Now originally I was going to use this with command line. But once I got KVM enabled, it's very easy to use Vert Manager. And with Vert Manager, you're able to get audio working. You're able to allocate better, uh, easier memory and more CPU cores. It's just easier to use in general. So instead of using command line, we're going to scroll up here and you'll see graphical front ends for QEMU. And we're going to be using is Vert Manager. But initially, let's install QEMU. So we'll pop open a terminal. And the first command you're going to run is sudo pacman-s. QEMU and go through this installation. The second thing you're going to download is Vert Manager. sudo pacman s Vert Manager and go through that installation process. And then you have those two programs installed. Once they're installed, you should be able to build a virtual machine. You can even test it out by running this command, making a small virtual hard drive somewhere. It'll pop up into your home directory as a uh, Windows, it'll just be a, r a random binary file with that size you allocated to it. Now once you've done that, you should be all ready to go to make a virtual machine. The next step will be to launch Vert Manager. Now this is, the, this is where uh, people with unique systems or systems that are either older or even newer than my machine may run into some problems. Either Vert Manager might crash or there might be an error message. Unfortunately, I don't have those error messages anymore and I can't really recreate them. So any problems, you'll have to go into the comment section or even just look up the problem you're having in the just on Google and it should pop up probably by Arch Linux, uh, by the Arch Linux um, wiki and you'll, and you'll be able to find the solution to that problem. That's how I basically troubleshooted this whole process here. Now the next step, and this is optional, but I found it to be very important to get the machine to boot. Um, and this is where I'd, I'd recommend if you have an older machine to use VirtualBox because VirtualBox isn't using kernel uh, virtualization. QEMU is using virtual kernel virtualization and it's a little bit different than VirtualBox. If you're running older hardware, use VirtualBox, use another emulator because older hardware most likely will not be compatible with KVM and KVM is kernel kernel based virtual yeah, kernel based virtual machine. And if your hardware is not compatible, what I found without having KVM enabled, the Windows 10 would boot very slowly. I couldn't get to the installation process. After installation, I'd be hit with errors and things like that. So to enable KVM, you need to go into your BIOS. And for this, this is my this is what my BIOS looks like because I have an Asus motherboard. You have to enable Intel Virtual Technology and VT-D. This is to enable not only KVM, but also IOMMU if you do go down that route. So once you have Virtual Machine Manager running, you're going to press the New button. You're going to create a new virtual machine. We're going to select a local ISO image. So you may wonder, how do I get a Windows 10 ISO? I have two options for you. If you're on a Windows, if you're on a Linux or Mac machine, and you head over to this link I'll have in the description below, you should be able to download a Windows 10 ISO this way because it knows that I'm not on Windows and I can't use the tool. So this will allow me to select the edition and then choose my language and then select the version I want and it will get let me download a, uh, a Windows 10 ISO. The second way, say you don't want Windows 10, you want an older version of Windows, I'm going to navigate you to, uh, I don't know how to say that, I'm not even going to try. Uh, this is a program that you can download here. It's an ISO downloader. It taps the legitimate Windows servers, uh, Microsoft servers for ISO images, and you're able to download Windows 7, Windows 8.1, 10, pre Insider Preview, a bunch of other things as well, uh, and you're able to do that. You just need the real license key. Now, to get a real license key, you should go to kingwin.net. Kingwin.net, of many of you who are gamers, uh, you will know for keys similar to G2A, but they have Windows 10 OEM keys. And with the OEM keys, you're able to buy a version of Windows for cheap and not have to spend $200. So that's a good way to get that as well. So I already have an ISO image downloaded, so we'll press forward. 
I'm going to select where my ISO is, Windows 10 ISO, choose volume, forward. I'm going to give it four CPUs and four gigs of RAM. That's fine. You could give it more or less depending on your system's configuration. And a 40 gig hard drive. That is fine. Windows 10, finish. Oh, this is an important step here to get network access. So by default, it's set by NAT. We don't want that. We want to do our host device. And bridge is good because that will let us have, we'll have internet on our host machine, which is our Linux machine. And we'll also have internet on the virtual machine. If you set it to pass through, your your network card is going to go entirely to the virtual machine and your Linux machine won't have any network access. So we'll press finish. It's going to create and it will boot. We can minimize this now. And now we're headed into the installer. So on the base level of this installation, it's not that difficult. What's difficult is troubleshooting the problems that may arise. And unfortunately, it's very difficult as creating this tutorial to preemptively know the problems that you'll have during your installation. Again, if I, rec I recommend highly that if you're running older hardware, I'm saying in the last 10 years, if, you're not, if you haven't built a machine in the last four years, I would say probably stick with uh, VirtualBox or any other virtual machine that runs in the system instead of doing this because the problems that you'll probably get outweigh the benefit of this. That, that being said, if you have newer hardware, i7, a, the newest AMD processors, or if you're running Ryzen, you should be fine because your BIOS will support this, your CPU will support this, and most likely most part hardware of your system will support virtualization in some way. So now that we're in the installer, we'll go to install now. We're going to say I don't have a product key. We can go through the Windows installation without a product key. I, I did it before and it was fine. Um, we'll select Windows 10 Pro. That's fine. Accept the terms. We do custom installation. We'll select new, apply. Okay. Now we have our system reserve partition and our partition two next. And we'll go through the installation process. This originally for me, I did this without KVM enabled and it took almost three or four hours to install and it failed because KVM wasn't enabled and I had a lot of problems with that. Once I got KVM enabled, which in included troubleshooting a host of issues on my system with, um, System CTL not being able to load kernel modules and just really weird stuff on my end that I was able to fix. And once I was able to get that, I enabled KVM in my, I enabled virtualization in my BIOS. And from there, I was able to get this working. So this installation shouldn't take that long. It should take about less than 10 or 20 minutes to get set up. And then once that's done, you really have a working Windows 10 installation. From there, I recommend if you have the compatible system here, you should be able to get IOMMU working as well. So I'm going to let this install and then I'll come back to this video and uh, we'll see how it works. All right, so now that we booted into Windows 10, I'm going to show you the configuration because from installing it to now, I have changed the configuration a little bit. Once you boot up or even when you shut down, there's a little eye up here. It allows you to reconfigure your options here. So your boot options, things like that. Under CPUs, I've reset up to typology and set up manually set up CPU. So I have five, so five sockets, five cores, and two threads. This is to just get better performance from my machine. I have an Intel i7 6700K, so I'm able to, to give it a little bit more wiggle room for better performance. In memory, I've upped it to six gigabytes of RAM because I found four was too too little. A big thing, a big thing here that you can play around with is video uh, setting. I switched mine from, I believe, QXL to VMVGA just because VMVGA seems to work better in the idea that the, the display runs a little bit better. It's not as laggy. The mouse isn't as slow. And overall, the system just feels a little bit more native than it did originally when I booted in because it felt a little sluggish. And I didn't want to show you a sluggish machine because you definitely can play around with this and uh, be able to get the best performance through this and see really what's going on. Um, also, you can add hardware. So... The kind of stuff I'm going to try to play around with to see if I can get working is PCI device, and you could, I could, that's there. So I don't know, I don't think I can get it to work. I don't think that's possible in my system, but never know. I'm going to play around with it. But yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. If you have any problems, leave them in the comment section below. We'll try to help you out. Google's the best resource when it comes to this kind of stuff. The Arch Wiki is going to be a great resource as well. Uh, if there's if there's a problem, if you're if you're uh, having an issue, there's 99% chance that someone else out there is having the same problem and came up with a solution.
So the researchers are definitely out there to get this working. As always, my name is Anton Suarez. Please rate, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.